So now that we saw the running demo, let's dive into the code and we'll review um, some of the things that were happening within the code as we watch that demo. A quick note is, as you might expect, and hopefully you saw, when we were running this, all, the co all this code is in its own directory, SparkML, and it's off the root of Spark Course. So the code should look familiar in some instances to the Spark streaming code, um, but let's save that for a little bit later. The entry point into this driver program here is with the main argument, and this is what we called when we, uh, when we deployed the jar using Spark Submit. A couple of things to call out right away is, I introduced this, uh, I, I brought in a new library here to help with all these config variables, J Commander. So that's added in the build SBT. And that just is uh, convenient for all the various uh, command line options that we're passing it in. Essentially, we're gonna be doing two things as shown in the day, as shown in the demo. We're going to train and then we're gonna predict. Let's go over training first. The way we train is if we if we pass in the train data argument. And then we'll call this k mean train task train. So in order for a machine learning model to make predictions, we've got to train it based on some existing data. What we do in this train function then is that we're training a new model. So what we passed in was a string for train data, which was input. And I think I briefly showed you that, but that input directory contains files for English, Spanish, and Russian. We can call text file with a directory name and it will pull in all those files and create a new RDD, train RDD. And then now let's do some things. Now let's get into the code that's more machine uh, learning related. We're gonna map over the entire RDD and we're gonna pass it through this featureize method in utils. We need a certain type of data to work with machine learning and that's what we're doing here. In this featureize method, we're, call, we're using the hashing TF object and we're passing in a number of dimensions when we initialize it. And then we're gonna do a, we're gonna convert this um, string that we have um, we're gonna use the sliding method. We'll pass in a, a number of two and we'll get back a sequence from it. And that's what's required for this tram, transform method, um, which will transform this string to a vector of double, which is required for k-means. And then I put some uh, notes here for you in the code itself. So now that we've got the data in a format that's appropriate for training the model, we can actually call k-means now and we're going to create that model. Train is going to accept our new parse data, the number of clusters, and the number of iterations. So number of clusters is something that we passed in at the command line, and what we're doing for this simple example is we believe we should cluster it up to three times. So we've got three language files, so ideally we'd cluster each line and each row in the RDD to be part of one of three available clusters. Next is the number of iterations or telling K means how many times it should go over the data to try to determine what is the most appropriate cluster to put that row RDD into. Um, so yeah. Uh, Let's see, the next line here is we're making an RDD from the, the, the Spark context. Uh, this is what we're doing, we're saving it as an object file. Um, this is so we can use it later on when we're gonna use the predictions, when we actually connect to Slack and we try to predict the text that's coming in, which cluster we believe it should fit into. Finally, we run this, sam we're, gonna, we're gonna run a prediction on the training data itself. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a random sample from our train RDD data, and then we're gonna map over it, and then we're going to we're gonna predict also using featureize um, 
across you know this this 10 percent sample so then we'll print it out and this will just give us an idea of the clusters that are being created with the data we have for example if we go back to the terminal that we ran there's a couple of things that were actually a little bit disturbing to me or not necessarily disturbing this is this is maybe a good time to give you um, uh, some some thoughts on you know your your models are going to be only as good as your training data and when we see some of these outputs here some concerning things to me would be we've got something that's obviously Spanish here going into cluster zero cluster ID of zero and then we've got something here that's obviously not obvious um, I know a little Spanish so I should say that this to me I would think would be also in cluster zero, but it's in cluster two. We don't have any, well, we've got Russian up here as part of the sample, um, which is going into a different cluster one. So that's good. And by the way, um, I don't speak any Russian, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know if any of this Russian is offensive um, or if it's funny or I have no idea. So um, like I said, I, I think I showed you this random text generator that I used to create the, the various input data. And if I was gonna take this example further, I would say that maybe um, in the input directory, you'll see these files. You can see they're pretty small. One way you can improve the model is to have more training data available. So maybe, I don't know, you could uh, try running this random text generator and augmenting it over and over again into a much larger file. That might produce different results or create a couple of other languages ones like Japanese or Polish, whatever, right? Um, different language files. And then if you would do that, as you can probably guess, I would pass in more clusters because on the input line, we just put in three clusters or how we expect it to be organized or a starting point. You know, these machine learning exercises, they're really iterative. You've got to go over it many, many times. All right, so where were we? That's where, this is the training. I wanted to call out one other thing here too, I think is this, and I've got it in the, the notes. Um, we, we call cache on it. If we were doing this on a much larger set, we might want to call, um, uh, you know, account or something like that on parse data, some sort of spark action to actually trigger cache. Um, yeah, so that's the code for training and that's what we ran uh, to start things off in the demo. We, tra we trained and then we saved it to the model location here. And then we were ready to do some actual near real-time predictions with the Spark streaming task. So back here to Spark ML app, if we pass in a model location, which we did on the second terminal window, and then a Slack token. We're going to run the Slack streaming tasks with these arguments to the run method. This object should look familiar to you from the previous sections on streaming. I just updated it here. I also added some comments for the code as you dive into it a little bit more if you wish to. But let's go over it from top to bottom. We've got a streaming context. We've got the receiver stream being set up with the Slack receiver. This hasn't gone entirely unchanged from the previous section. And now let's create a D stream here. We're going to marshal the JSON and we're going to filter it because all we care about is the text. Again, I've got comments here for you. Then with uh, we're going to create a new K-mean model using this k-mean function. We're going to, as you can tell, map over the dstream of strings, which we have here. We're gonna featureize it, as we've already gone over. And then we're going to create a, a, a tuple here of the string uh, that we, we have coming through, and then the prediction vector of where it belongs in the cluster. So that's when we were seeing in the, the output here. Let's see if I can stream, stream up. Oh, it's still running. So what we saw, I'll stop this. 
in the output is the text coming from Slack. Coming from Slack up here more. And then the cluster ID that we thought it belonged to or the model thought it belonged to. So yeah, this is it. This is a, a, a template for you to uh, experiment with and take a look at the code and learn a little bit more about it. If you have any questions or comments on this, of course, put it up on the discussion board. But for now, that's what I wanted to show you, this running example and then provide you with this code that you can use to experiment with and, and you know tweak for your own needs if you, if you want or experiment with more language files or more, more actual training data. So I hope that helps. And now we'll move on to the next portion, which is covering some more Spark-specific machine learning.